Waterproofing and downproofing. Waterproofing is the act or process of making something waterproof. The condition of being made waterproof and the something capable of imparting water, waterproofness, such as coating. So waterproofing uh, versus compared to dampproofing, uh, often terms that the waterproofing and dampproofing are incorrectly interchanged. According to ASTM definitions, waterproofing is the treatment of a surface to prevent the passage of liquid in the presence of hydrostatic pressure. Dampproofing is the treatment of a surface to retard the absorption of moisture in the absence of hydrostatic pressure. So there is a difference between the absence and the presence of hydrostatic pressure. So in the presence of hydrostatic pressure, there is a continuous water no, or presence of water that has pressure that is acting upon the wall, the floor, the uh, foundation of the structure. In the proofing, there is what you call absence of hydrostatic pressure, but there is presence of moisture. Okay, and it is absorbed by the wall, floor, ceiling, and any parts of the concrete structure. Virtually all building envelopes, particularly below grade areas and plaza decks, encounter hydrostatic pressure from water during their lifetime. So in this figure, it is shown that the concrete, you know, penetrate, water penetrates the concrete in different ways. Like in this, on the left side, you can see that there is honeycombs you know, or large voids on the concrete. So it means that when you pour the concrete, there is a there is an absence of concrete in some areas of the uh, concrete wall, slab, or floor. Okay? So it means on that honeycomb, water will uh, stay on that honeycomb. And when the water is stayed on the honeycomb, there will be presence of water and it may seep or pass through through the uh, porosity of the concrete on the other side of the wall. Another one is the cracks. No? If there are cracks on the concrete, water will passage, will penetrate the concrete through the cracks. Another one is the joints. No? Buildings often have joints because of the, the span of the building, because of the movement of the earth, the building of Sometimes it's because of uh, addressing earthquake. Sometimes it, it's there because it, it addresses vibrations. So on those joints, there will be an instance that water will penetrate. So it means that you need to address the connection of the joints of the building. Another one is the capillary action, no? which the the characteristic of the concrete to absorb water because water is porous. No, it will absorb water. So there is a there is a possibility that water will be passing through the concrete because of the no, absorption through the force. Another one is the hydrostatic pressure forces on the other side, other side of the wall, other sides of the, the slab or the deck that will push the water and penetrate the, the pores of the concrete. So as you can see, penetration through openings, through the joints, the cracks or the voids, or penetration through the concrete because of the capillary action and the hydrostatic pressure. So there is this uh, uh, characteristic of the concrete no? that water can penetrate through these concrete structures. So the water also have a certain mechanism to go to penetrate, no? aside from the, um, uh, the, 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 what you, the reaction of the concrete, the, the water to the structure. There is what you call the permeation. No? 
where the water penetrates to the wall and there is what you call the weak action when the water absorbed when the water passed through was is absorbed through dampness and then penetrates the upper side of the the structure and another one is by salt in the drainage because water uh, the salt you no know, is uh, produces water in uh, if it's stored in a few days or or weeks you no know? so if there is presence of salt on the drainage there will be presence of water okay so permeability refers to the amount of water migration through concrete when the water is under pressure and also the ability of concrete to resist penetration to, of any substance be it liquid gas or chloride ion permeability of concrete is defined as the property that controls the rate of flow of fluids into a porous solid in this case this is the concrete it largely depends on the size of the pores connectivity of pores and how the tortuous the path is the perme permeating fluid so what is the factors what are the factors affecting the concrete permeability the water cement ratio water to cement ratio influences the concrete permeability to a great, great extent the higher the water cement ratio the greater the concrete permeability okay so Another is the compaction concrete, the compaction of concrete. When concrete is adequately compacted, all air voids and trap bleed between the concrete are eliminated. Because when you are pouring concrete on columns or on uh, retaining walls or on uh, slabs, no, you need to make sure that the, wall, the, the concrete is compacted, adequately compacted, so that there will be no voids, no honeycombs. No? As a result, pores and more constantly interconnected pores are avoided and eventually concrete permeability is declined if there is adequate compaction. So uh, we, we, we use uh, uh, concrete vibrator or sometimes we, only, we use uh, uh, metal rods no, to make sure that there is what you call uh, uh, to prevent the void space or the, uh, the honeycomb inside concrete structures. No? So as you, uh, honeycomb is one of the characteristics that your concrete uh, 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 parts or concrete uh, components are not, uh, does not meet the standard. So curing of the concrete, concrete uh, curing of concrete substantially influences the permeability of concrete. Sufficient, uh, sufficient curing allows proper cement hydration. No, so if you, you cure the concrete, uh, properly, hydration will be uh, properly uh, uh, um, call, properly uh, addressed. No? And another one, other factors that affects the permeability is the age of the concrete. No, if the con if the building is uh, old, no, there will be a uh, uh, concrete per uh, permeability. Another one is the cement properties. If you are using the right type of cement for the right type of construction. The type, the sizes of aggregates also will affect the permeability of the concrete. The use of admixture. So there are certain admixture that you can use to uh, to address the permeability of the concrete. Another one is the loss of mixing water. You know? So if there is, uh, if you have you have provided uh, not enough water in your concrete mixture, there is a possibility that the concrete mixture is not uh, uh, will not meet the permeability standards. No? Permeability declines as the concrete age increases because pores will be filled by hydration product. So this is the weak action. As you can see in the weak action, uh, is the transport of water to concrete elements. To concrete elements, no? uh, from the face, no, in contact with water. So this is the phase in contact with water to the drying phase. This is the drying phase that occurs at the basement and tunnel slab in the hollow offshore structure. So water on the other side of the structure, which is which is the side that is exposed to to uh, to water. So there will be a what you call a, a, a weak action that the water will be uh, collected by the uh, lower part, which is uh, uh, frequently exposed with water, and it will be uh, uh, rising no, to the to the side of the wall, no? and th there will be a wicking action. No? 
the freaking forces pull the water up to the concrete. No? So the water will go with, will be uh, uh, rising no? on the concrete wall, and you can see now traces of uh, moisture on this side no? because of the wicking action or the wick action. And there will be panding of water underneath the slab, the concrete slab on the other side because water will be uh, transferring from from this side to the other side. Okay, so this should be prevented. Okay, this should be prevented. Another the another one is the intrinsic cracks. No intrinsic cracks. This is the small cracks that is that that is uh, uh, a problem of waterproofing. No. Uh, if you will be putting admixtures to your waterproof, to your concrete mixture, no, so that uh, like other brands that we use in uh, uh, admixtures for waterproofing, but this is not sufficient because of the intrinsic uh, intrinsic cracks. No? Because the intrinsic cracks will be the one that will uh, be the factor for water penetration. Because if there are cracks, water will penetrate through the cracks, as we have, as we have seen in the previous slide. So as you can see in this figure, uh, on letter E, this is cracks on slab. No, the the, pla the plastic screen cage. No, type of cracking plastic screen cage. No, this is the type of cracking in the floor slab. So there will be thirty minutes to six hours. No? As you can see. No? So so we should prevent these cracks for to prevent the water penetrating the the slab even on the parapet wall or on the retaining wall or on the columns. No? Water penetrating on the columns will uh, will make the reinforcement rust. No? So that when the reinforcement rust, it will shrink. No? And it will shrink. No? It will uh, um, affect the structural stability of the column or the building. OK? So, Waterproofing, so building waterproofing is a process which is designed to prevent water from penetrating a building. Usually extensive waterproofing measures are added to a building at a time of construction. To provide moisture control from the start, waterproofing may also be done after a building is built to address problems as they emerge or as a part of building retrofit. So you can, you can, uh, you can, uh, do the waterproofing before construction, during construction, or after construction while retrofitting the, the building. So there are different types of waterproofing system that we, you can use, and we will explain that in the next lecture. Waterproofing is done in various parts of the building, which include water, the toilets, the bathrooms, the terrace, the roofs, basement, swimming pools, underground ducts, Water, so waterproofing will also maintain the appearance of the building. So it is also important that you properly waterproof the exterior of your building so that it will make the it, the paint will last longer, the the color of the building will last longer if there is a there is a good waterproofing on the building. Okay, so the, this these are the different ways to waterproof a structure. So why waterproof structure? No, in uh, in building construction, a structure needs waterproofing since concrete itself will not be watertight on its own. No, but uh, you can put additives. No, for the concrete to be watertight. No, but it is not that uh, reliable. Okay, so the conventional system of waterproofing involves membrane. Okay, this re this relieves the application of one or more layers of membrane. Available various materials like bitumen, silicate, PVC, EDM, EDPM, EPDM, and others shall act as a barrier between the water and the building structure, preventing the passage of water. Because the additive will not be enough to, to prevent the water from passing through the, the, uh, the structure, the concrete structure, for a long period of time. Okay? So a safer foundation, it is also used for safer foundation, waterproofing, exposure to weather conditions like heavy rain, sunlight, cause structural problems. And if wooden decks, uh, example, are not properly waterproof, uh, we can notice discoloration, water stains, rotting, and fungi growth. Walls that properly waterproof will give hydrostatic pressure, creating cracks and leaks on the walls and floor. So if you did, you did not uh, do your waterproofing on the exterior of your building, there will be occurrence of 
water seepage, uh, water hydration, water uh, cracks on the wall, paint will be chipped off or the paint will be uh, 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 eject, no, will be uh, peeling, no? will be peeling from the from the surface of the wall. So another another uh, reason why we waterproof our structure is for healthier environment. Humidity and moisture is the is what molds and mild you want. So molds and mild you could, could cause respiratory problems like asthma and trigger allergic reaction. So there is no way to remove the fungi spores inside the house, and the only thing that could could remove such growth would be the control of moisture. So if there will be absence of moisture, there will be what you call a a uh, uh, moist the, the molds in uh, mild juice will be decreased. You no, know? molds do not only grow on walls or or areas where there are moisture issues. It could grow on anything like wood, carpet, even the food. You no, know? even the furniture. It can grow, it can grow molds in in uh, in bacteria or or uh, mild juice or and fungi. You no, know? by reducing humidity. You no, know, it, it means that moisture content inside the room. Preventing condensation and water seepage, mold and mild growth, mild growth, mild growth could be increased. No? Another one is to eliminate insect growth. This is why we waterproof because we want to eliminate the insects. No, there are far, the various kinds of insects like water bugs, cockroaches, beetles, critters that find heaven in damp areas. No? So you will find cockroaches ants on areas that is very damp okay so we must prevent this you no know, by using waterproofing or damp proofing wet basement are ideal for wood boring insects like termite to reproduce so if you have a a, a part of the building that is exposed to water and you did not treat that part of building in case if it's wood the termites might, the termites, no, it may grow on that part of the building. So these insects could damage not only the foundation, but also to important things inside the room. So it can also eat your, your uh, files, it can eat your, the termites can eat your furniture, it can eat your books, okay? So you need to, so, so it is very important to have a waterproof structure. So where, where do you apply waterproofing? We can apply waterproofing on the positive side. Waterproofing, no? it is on the, uh, the external part that is exposed to the hydrostatic pressure. The negative side, which is inside the building, which is shown in this figure, which is the positive side, and this is the negative side. The blind side, this is, this is the, the basement. No? Okay. And the interior application, like in toy, uh, bathroom floorings, um, kitchen floorings, they put waterproofing on these areas. No, if they, you will be uh, building a an apartment building, multi multi floor apartment building, you will definitely put waterproofing on on uh, on the kitchen area. And it's very important to put waterproofing in the exterior of the building. So this is the positive side waterproofing. No, if, in case this is the concrete and this is the water pressure and this is the interior part of the building, you put a coating or a membrane on the outside of the building. So this is called the positive side of waterproofing. It can be in the lower ground. It can be on the upper ground. Okay. It is designed to stop water before it has a chance to enter the structure and cause structural damage. No. It, it will prevent the water to penetrate the concrete. And this is the most effective solution. Okay? So another is the negative side waterproofing. This has downside, but this is an also a, a type of waterproofing. It is on the interior part of the house or the basement. You know? So interior side opposite the water pressure side of the structure. So this can be the firewall or this can be a a firewall that's frequently exposed to uh, weather, you know, if there is 
something like this, or a this can be done in most re, uh, uh, remedy work, no? In case that there is uh, there is a existing what you call a uh, soil on the other side, and you cannot dig the soil anymore, you can put a waterproofing membrane on the negative side. This can also be used on the eleva elevator pits or the tank liners, the concrete tanks, no concrete uh, cistern tanks. No, you can put a negative side waterproofing on the concrete uh, uh, cistern tank. Okay, so the blind side waterproofing is the positive side applied prior to installing the structural walls or slab. So this is the one that. Uh, uh, you, this is the areas of the building or the structure that you cannot uh, access after the building has been erected. You know? Typically, inaccess inaccessible after the structure is complete. In many cases, this is the only this is the only positive side waterproofing option. So there are what you call membrane waterproofing, plastic membrane waterproofing that is usually or commonly you know, laid on the foundation before pouring concrete to protect your foundation from penetration of water. So this is a thick plastic that is being laid on the foundation or the slab before pouring concrete. If you did, you, if you have, uh, this will prevent the water penetrating the tiles of your lower floor, no? your ground floor. Another one, is, another is the interior application. So in the interior application, you can either use a positive side or a negative side waterproofing. If you will put the negative side in the interior, it, it, it will be seen on the elevator pits or the, if it is used for retrofitting. If the positive side, it, it can be used on the split slabs, the bathrooms, no? the flooring of the bathrooms, the laboratories, if your laboratory is in the school, the mechanical rooms, no? in case that you have the air handling units, or for uh, protection of the uh, uh, what you call this the uh, panel boards so you need to put waterproofing on the uh, positive side to prevent the panel boards from uh, getting moisture kitchens no? and the fountains and planters so these are the positive side from for the interior application another one is for the exterior application this is the positive side foundation walls plaza decks tunnels parking decks balconies, bridge decks, planters, and roofing. And for the blind side waterproofing for exterior, it is, you can see this in the soil retention system or the party walls or the firewalls, the cut and cover tunnels, the under slab, okay? The elevator pits and the under thinning. Okay, so these are the different application of waterproofing on the exterior of the building. So now we go to the damp proofing or the dampness. What is the dampness? Presence of hydroscopic or gravitational moisture. No, it means that the moisture will be penetrating on the bottom or on the top, and it will seep on the uh, what you call this the wall, and uh, and it will uh, you can see the water penetration on the on the other side on different areas, not exactly on the area where the water is penetrating. So dump prevention is therefore one of the important factors for building design. Because as you can see this, there may be water pans on this area and it will you know, rise, the water will rise and it will be seen on the uh, lower part of your house. Okay, that is what you call dampness. So the causes of dampness, moisture, moisture rising up the walls from the ground, or rain travel from the wall tops going down. Okay, that will also cause damp dampness. Rain beating against the external wall. So if in case that your wall is not a, uh, doesn't have a positive waterproofing, rain will, it will cause dampness. This is usually seen on walls that are not on the uh, firewall side. No? If your uh, facade is frequently exposed to rain, it, you may experience dampness on your front facade of the building. Poor drainage at the site of the building. If there are poor drainage in the perimeter of the building, water will penetrate at the ground floor. Another is defective construction. So if there are lots of cracks on the building and water will penetrate on the cracks and you will be, there will be a hard time looking for the, the source of the water. 
So, effects of dampness, number one is, is breeding of mosquito, moisture caused by unsightly patches, softening or plaster. So, you can see now that there are uh, what you call a blistering of the walls, no? blistering of the paint and blistering of the plaster. May cause an efflorescence, disintegration of the stones and brick. No? So, the, the, the structure will disintegrate. No? Uh, the, the concrete will be pulverized, no? and there will be a problem structurally. Cause of rusting and corrosion of metal fittings. No? So if there are what you call metal fittings on the, particularly on the wall or the floor, it will rust. Floor coverings are damaged. No? In case that you have a floor covering that is uh, what you call a carpet, it will be damaged. If there will be a, wall, a floor covering that is tiles, you can see watermarks underneath the tiles. No? because of the presence of dampness on the slab underneath the tiles, okay? Because you did not put a blind sign waterproofing. So precautions, the following precautions should be taken to prevent the dampness in the buildings if we're applying the various techniques as in, and methods that will be described later. The site should be located on the high ground. So this is the principle that you should be uh, 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 considering that you should Select a site on the high ground, no, and the soil soil to be safeguard against foundation dampness, no. If you will excavate a foundation, make sure that you put a a damp proofing, no. It should be ensured that water level is at least three meters below the surface of the ground, or the lowest point even in the wet season. So you need to make sure that you address or you uh, look for the water table and create possible solution, either by making your ground floor higher than the water table and or making, uh, putting a waterproofing, uh, a positive side or a blind side waterproofing on areas that is lower no, than the water level, okay? For better drainage, for better drainage, uh, the ground level surface and building should also slope away. Okay, so all exposed walls should be of sufficient thickness to safeguard against rain penetration. If walls are bricks, they should be at least 30 meters thickness. No? So if you have a wall that is a brick or a, a, a hollow blocks wall, no, to, to address the water penetration, you can use a wall that is 30 centimeter thick. Good quality cement, mortar should be used to produce a definite pattern and perfect band in building units throughout the construction work. So it is very vital to use the proper type of concrete or cement. No? This is essential to prevent the formation of cavities of corners in different settlement, in differential settlement. Cornices should be provided in wall on window seals and uh, copings on the plinth. It should, should be sloped to, uh, slope on top and throttled on the under, undesirable to throw the rain and water away from the walls. So these are the different uh, way to, to prevent the water dampness. So all exposed surface should be covered with waterproofing cement plaster. So everything that is exposed to, to weather, should, you should put a waterproofing cement. You know? And hollow walls are more desirable than solid walls in preventing dampness. You know? Hence, the cavity wall construction should be adapted wherever possible. So I have discussed the cavity wall on the previous lectures. No, It is where you have two walls and there is a space in between them. So it means that if water will be penetrating on the first wall, it will not transfer to the second wall because there is a gap between the two walls. No? So that is what you call a cavity wall. Okay. So all the walls that is, are exposed uh, uh, through weather, you need to put a waterproofing cement. No, uh, not necessarily a waterproofing uh, membrane. 